If you were to ask me who the top 10 people were who I could interview or have on the show, today's guest would be one of them. And to be perfectly honest, I couldn't even believe that I was sitting down to have this discussion with her. But on today's episode, there's a woman by the name of Kim Jones. You may know her as Real Talk Kim, who was essentially my pastor in a very dark season of my life because I couldn't get myself to church. I couldn't even get myself out of my bed most days, but there were snippets, her voice that God used in my life. And she's a powerhouse for the gospel. She has a word of encouragement for anybody that is in a season of waiting. And I know that today's episode is going to bless you. Stay tuned. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. The Hearing Jesus Podcast is so excited to partner with Compassion International. We believe in Compassion's mission to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. I've seen the impact myself through the letters and the updates that I've received as a sponsor. It's not just changing the lives of children, it's changing entire families, whole communities, always through the local church and always in Jesus' name. When you sponsor a child, you ensure access to quality education, medical checkups, healthy food, clean water, and most importantly, the love of Jesus, delivered through a church in their community because of a generous, caring sponsor like you. And you can speak life, love, and hope to your sponsored child through personal letters that you'll exchange. I hope you'll join me in sponsoring a child through Compassion today. All you have to do is pull out your phone, open up a text, and text hearing Jesus to 83393. You'll get back a text with a picture of a child who is waiting for a sponsor and a link to sponsor that child. You can also go to compassion.com forward slash hearing Jesus to choose a boy or a girl to sponsor. When you sponsor a child, we will send you a copy of She Hears Learning to Listen to Jesus, my Bible study, as a token of our thanks for investing in the life of a child. Thank you for joining me and sponsoring a child through Compassion today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, and today I have a special treat for you. I've invited Kim Jones onto the show to talk with us for a little bit, and you guys may know her as Real Talk Kim. She is somebody that has personally been an inspiration to me for throughout the years. Like I think we were just talking, it's been close to 15 years that I've been listening to her voice, and and one of the things I told Kim right before we started the show was that there were moments in my life where I could not even pray. I was just face down in the mud, stuck. And I would hear this voice of reason with her where she would say things like, get your face out of the mud. And, you know, she became my pastor in a season where I didn't want to be pastored. I would listen on social media or I would pick up something on the radio or I would hear something here and there. Um, But God has used her in my life. And so I am so excited to be able to introduce her to you. So Kim, would you just take a minute to introduce yourself? I can't imagine there's many of my listeners who don't know who you are, but on the off chance, there's like a guy, a random guy listening today that doesn't know who you are, would you introduce yourself to the audience? I am Kimberly Jones. I pastor a church right here in Atlanta, Georgia called Limitless Church. And I'm just super honored to be with you. So thankful. Yeah, well, I'm excited too. Um, One of the things I wanted to bring Kim on today to talk about is something that I hear over and over from women is talking in different versions, talking about seasons of waiting and not just waiting. Like I think we all understand there's going to be waiting seasons in our lives, but waiting and waiting and waiting to the point where we feel like we are just stuck. And I know that this is a topic that, Kim, you are passionate about. So I wondered if you could just give us some insight on some of the things the Lord's been putting on your heart recently about this topic. You know, I really want to spin this for a second because I was thinking uh, when you were telling me in the beginning of the show before we started uh, running this uh, air in the show was we were talking about how you found me 15 years ago. And I'm talking to that person today that you are – in that place where you feel like you ain't never coming out. Yeah. And I just think back 15 years ago when I was a voice to you and how 
all throughout those 15 years, how there's been moments where I felt stuck. I felt, I felt like, man, again, I got to go through this again. (laughs) And I want to encourage somebody because there's somebody out there that is waiting on you for your transformation. That in that moment of feeling stuck, which we all do, the Bible even says that we're going to, the rain's going to fall on the just and the unjust. And sometimes we're going to get relationships with people that have no, no character and they, their character can't keep up with our purpose. Or we fell in love with them when we were broken and now we're getting healed and they're disgusting us. We all go through seasons or our child becomes a prodigal after we gave them all of our life, raising them. And we find ourselves at this place where I don't even know where to go. Like I, 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 I've been moving, I'm getting no traction. I've been uh, being consistent. I've uh, given up my life for my husband to go to college, to get his degrees. And I was a stay at home mom. And then after 30 years, he walks in and says, he doesn't love me anymore. And here I am having to start all over again. There are going to be moments like that in our lives. It's just life lifing. But here's what we got to understand that before we were ever even a thought in our parents' womb, and our mother's womb, that God already knew we were going to be here. That's the game changer. The game changer is understanding where I am as a season, not a sentence. Where I am may be T to them, but it's a testimony in the making to him. Mm-hmm. And so that's how you keep moving. You keep moving, realizing that as long as you got a pulse, God still got a plan. And so when you find yourself in those moments of grief or in those moments of feeling erased after all these years of the only thing you knew was one thing. And now you're having to start all over again and revamp. And you're in your forties or 38s or 58s or ever how old you are. It's understanding that God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to move. You got to put your faith in him and move. The Bible says he's a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. He didn't say a strobe light which means we got to start moving. So as long as you stay in that place saying, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, you're going to be stuck. Yeah. You start realizing, devil, you should have taken me out when you could have. Because I'm getting up today. Yeah. I may still fall tomorrow. I may still have a momentary lapse and go back to who I used to be and become, you know, that, that person that got me in this place in the first place, or I'm going to, but tomorrow I'm going to get up and do it again. So it's just realizing that you're not stuck because you're not a tree. Yeah. You know, one of the things I've really been uh, meditating on is I, I feel like I've I've said this a couple of times. We're in a, a C segment right now uh, that I'm talking about women of the Old Testament. And of course, one of the women we've been studying is Miriam. And when I was studying Miriam, realizing, you know, when, when she they crossed the Red Sea and she does that whole scene, it's Miriam's song and she's praising the Lord. We realize that she came prepared to praise, like she brought her instruments with her. You know, she was prepared to praise. But it's not like they immediately entered the promised land. She still had to go through that wilderness. And I remember just like having this realization moment, like she left slavery. God parted the waters and she is praising God, but she still got to go through all this wilderness. And I think sometimes we forget that we can still see God at work and moving even when we're in the wilderness. You know, me and you, Rachel, were just talking about how 15 years ago when you found me, you were walking through a place where you felt like you were straight face down in the mud. Yeah. And you were saying you were putting out these one minute clips, Kim, and I could handle one minute. Yeah. There are seasons where you just can handle one minute. There are seasons when you got to be face down in the mud and realize that all you got to do is flip over and look up because you're still going up. Yeah. And so I love that Miriam. She went in that thing. She was a boss. Yeah. I don't think that God ever lets us encounter anything that he's not going to use. Yeah. Like God could have come in and, and shifted some things in our lives quickly, but he needed us to go through it because we got free life college. Now, when we open our mouths, people listen yeah. because it's better than going to seminary life. Yeah. And you make it. Yeah, I like feel like you ain't making it today, but baby, you go make it. You going to come out of this. Mark my words. Yeah, and when you realize that this is a momentary break, I'm gonna look at it like a reset, and I'm gonna do like Miriam. I don't got to bring an instrument. I got my hands. I got my mouth, which life and death and the power of our words. Yeah. And when we begin to decree, even as a mama. 
Rachel. Yeah. We can go in our pantry and we can get some olive oil. We can get some hair oil, some peppermint de taro oil, mm -hmm. and we can lay our hands on it and anoint it mm -hmm. and then walk through our houses decreeing and declaring until you see the breakthrough happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's the power of a woman. Yeah. And I think sometimes we have to just make ourselves take that first step. I think sometimes, like I've talked to a lot of women that we've actually, I called it spring cleaning. We were talking about cleaning the house and getting anything that's not of God out of the house because I've just heard of a lot of people having an uptick of just spiritual experiences in their house. And just even me telling them, you have authority. You have a spiritual authority over your home. Get some olive oil and kick that thing out of your house. We've, we've been, I've been talking to so many women about it that they've never Never done that before. They've never realized the authority that God has given them within their family. And I think sometimes it starts with recognizing our authority for sure. Hey friends, I wanted to take a minute to share with you about one of our new partners, Five Lakes Coffee. For 20 years, Five Lakes has been helping people discover the magic of fresh roasted coffee. They craft roast in small batches, then ship direct so that you are getting the freshest and best tasting coffee. Five Lakes uses the highest quality specialty grade coffee beans from around the world. And let me tell you, we're kind of coffee snobs in my family and their coffee has converted even my daughter, who is a barista. As a family own and family-friendly company, I love their mission. As believers, our family loves supporting other Christian companies. And one of the things I absolutely love about this company is that they believe in loving their neighbors and they value being good stewards of what God has given them. My two favorites are the Signature Five Lakes Blend and Chris's Blend. Because for Chris's Blend, they donate $1 per bag to Forgotten Children's Ministry in Honduras. And guess what? As a podcast listener, you get an exclusive 20% off your first First order when you use the code Hearing Jesus. Head over to FiveLakes.com and experience the joy of fresh roasted goodness today. Again, head to FiveLakes.com and use code Hearing Jesus for 20% off your first order. My name's Preston Sprinkle, and I host the Theology in the Raw podcast. Theology in Raw aims to help believers to think Christianly about theological and cultural issues by engaging in curious conversations with a diverse range of thoughtful people. I have conversations with a wide range of different guests who come from different perspectives, and no topic is off limits. Sexuality, abortion, politics, LGBTQ, warfare, violence, marijuana, immigration, you name it. If you have a theological or cultural issue that you have been wrestling with, with over 1,100 episodes, we've probably talked about it on Theology in Raw. Along with conversations with various people, I also address questions sent in from my audience every month. And occasionally, I will talk about some of my latest research projects that I'm currently working on. Theology in Raw is not for everyone. It is uncut, uncensored, and I don't give trigger warnings. So check out Theology in Raw through your favorite podcast app. And I think that that this is where the enemy plays on women because we're so emotional. Yeah. And if the enemy can get us stuck on silly, like if the enemy can get us in our feelings, we start holding grudges against our spouses. We start getting resentment towards people that didn't support us or people that chose our ex over us and liked his post. And, you know, we get petty. And I think the enemy starts using that to break us down so we don't use our voice. We yeah. end up using our voice the wrong way. Yeah. God is over here saying, look, I have gone before you and I have made the crooked way straight and I gave you the ability to birth life. And so you got that same ability to pull yourself back up again, pull your thick thighs, what I like to say, <laughs> and move. I never had a breakthrough in my life that I first didn't move. Mm. Scared to death. I remember laying in my bed when I was walking through my divorce after 18 year, my 18 year marriage ended and I was devastated. And I remember laying in my bed because I'm a preacher's kid. I just thought we could pray everything away and lay on the floor. And, you know, I'm laying in the bed that night. And I said, God, take this. I was ready to get up. I was tired of being sick and tired. And I said, God, take this pain away from me. And I remember so clearly, Rachel, God said, I can't take it away. You got to get up and walk away. Mm. And to me, that meant, uh, that means I got to face the critics that means I got to get up and risk falling again because I already, I already like a failure. I'm the only one in my family that's ever walked through a divorce. You know, I'm, I'm having to start all over again at 30, 
six. And I realized at that moment that all it took was me getting up and praising my way out. And did, was it easy? I was working at a job at Bloomingdale's that I hated making $13 an hour. I felt so below mm-hmm. humble pie. But it was when I started looking at it like, oh my gosh, God ain't, no, nobody's coming to get me up. I got to get up and move. I got to mm-hmm. believe that God knows exactly where I am because he does. Yeah. And he wouldn't let me be here if he wouldn't have given me the grace and the mercy, which follows me every day of my life yeah. to help me get up. So I got to start looking forward instead of behind. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of a conversation I had the other day where I was talking to somebody about just experiencing, not even just experiencing healing, but walking in healing. And sometimes I think we're like Lazarus, like, you know, God did his part. Jesus did his part, but those grave clothes still had to come off. Like we have to unwrap ourselves sometimes and embrace the healing that God's already given us. And I think sometimes the enemy continues to keep us bound because we don't realize that we have a part to play. And so I've been meditating on that so much, especially when it comes to being stuck and wondering how much of it is us and how much of it is the enemy or how much of it is the power that we've given the enemy because we've not walked in our authority. And the enemy, man, yo, we got to understand something. He got kicked out of heaven with half the demons. He is quarantined in heaven and he has no power over you whatsoever. Yeah. The Bible says life and death. I mean, the Bible says no weapon in Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say the weapons weren't going to form. It said that they weren't going to prosper. And so that story with Lazarus is one of my favorite ones to preach because he got, he got healed. I mean, he came back to life. He still had those grave clothes and he had to bounce out of that thing. Yeah. God is funny. Yeah. God yeah. is he's strategic. He's funny. Yeah. He's like, I can't, a miracle is easy to get, but it's hard to keep. I need you to put a little bit of sweat in here so you don't go back. Yeah. I yeah, I love one of the things that you say is staying stuck requires as much energy as moving forward. Can you unpack that a little bit? Man, because staying stuck, you're staying in a place you hate. Like you're staying in a season, you're still stalking them on Facebook. You're still, you're still hurting your own heart over and over. You're still listening to the noise in your ear of what people have said about you over what God knows about you. So being stuck is a choice. Mm -hmm. Whenever you decide to get up, what do you got to lose? We're so afraid of getting rejected again, or um, I can't fall in love again because what if I make a mistake? What if you don't? You know, what What, what if I What if I uh, put myself out here to write a book and nobody buys it? What if they do? Yeah. It's, it's literally switching your brain because most of the time we stay where we are because of the people that we've allowed close to us yeah. that have really... They, there's nobody in our family ever done what we're doing and they don't understand it. God called you. He didn't call them when he called you. He didn't call a conference call. And so we're over here allowing the chatter. And that's where the, I think sometimes the, the weapon formed against us is us Mm -hmm. because we're allowing people to help us tie our shoes. That's never been in our shoes. Mm. We're, we're, we're taking constructive criticism from people that ain't never constructed anything. They just are quick to tell you what you can't do. Yeah. And so it's so easy to stay in that stuck place because it's familiar. Yeah. You no, know, it's a familiar place. Uh, getting up and walking into the unknown is faith. You don't need faith when you're stuck. Yeah. You're just scared to move. But when you realize that thieves don't rob empty vaults. Like the enemy has not been after me because I'm weak. He knows that if I ever find my voice, that I'm going to pull as many women out of hell as I can. Yeah. The victory. Because y'all listen to me. You might've been a young mama. You might've sacrificed your whole life for your loved ones, but baby, God has the propensity. He has this redemption power that he will shove all the years that you missed out on, on the project or trying to give people medicine that like to be sick. And when he sees that you're surrendering, he says, oh yeah, I'm about to shove all of your purpose into the years that you got left. Mm -hmm. He will not waste your purpose. His yes is yes and amen. So getting stuck and staying stuck is your choice. Getting up and moving forward is what faith is all about. You don't need faith when you're stuck. You need faith when you decide to get up and make a bestseller out of your story. Mm, I love that. 
You know, one of the things that I think I hear you talk about a lot, and I think it's also something that a lot of people struggle with, is quitting or not quitting. <laughs> and I think sometimes when we are in these seasons of waiting, some of it is we just quit way too early. And so I know that that is something that you talk a lot about, just not giving up, right? Well, you know, for me, I quit for so long, Rachel. Like, I mean, I was 36 years old, mad at God because of the choices I made, mad that he didn't fix the choices I never even consulted him about. Yeah. I never asked God if that was my husband. And then when my husband was unequally yoked with me, I was mad at God because he didn't fix it. My husband wasn't even talking to God. So how could my, how could God get to my husband? Yeah. And so for me, quitting was easy. Quitting was, I don't even know where I'm going to go from here. And my dad didn't believe in women preachers. I was way, raised in a religion that didn't believe in women preachers. I was in special ed my whole life. Still don't know where commas go. Writing a book was a joke. And so I kept telling myself society rules for me. And so I quit. But when you realize that nobody's coming to get you, nobody's yeah. coming to get you up, but you got the power in you to breathe life into your kids. Instead of saying, I'm going to die for my kids. I'm about to live for my kids. My kids are about to be so proud of their mama and they're going to be proud because you didn't quit. You might've quit like you, like I did for all those years, but at 41 years old, when I preached my very first sermon in my car, and that thing went viral. God has a way of literally taking the season that you finally say, I'm done quitting. I don't know what it's going to look like. I might make a fool of myself 15 times getting up. But one thing I ain't going to do is lay here dead another day of my life. Yeah. I'm going to get up. I'm going to be soft. I'm going to get my heart right. I'm going to not bleed on people that didn't cut me. But one thing I do understand is that the pain may not be my fault, but the healing is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking at it like that, yo, you start dreaming again. You start believing in yourself again. And before you know it, you thought the curtain had closed in your life when that situation happened. But God really was closing the curtain to set up for your next scene because he knew today you getting up. Oh, that's today so you're, you're coming back. Yeah. So powerful. And I love that, you know, the anticipation. And it's one of the things that I've also heard you say, anticipating what's next, because I think sometimes we we don't even, when we're in those seasons, sometimes we won't even dream about what's next because we can't see past the end of our foot, really. But yeah. yet there's things that God has put in each of our hearts that I know like you had said, what if, what if we could start anticipating what's next? You know, I just love that aspect of it. Yeah. It, because you got to realize that you're not dead. Yeah, yeah. You're the generational curse breaker. Yeah. And so when you get up and you decide today, I'm not going to cry over that anymore. Today, I'm not going to lay in my bed because my mother died during the pandemic and I have quit living. Yeah. And you realize that today when my daddy was dying three years ago, and he was taking his last breath and I was laying over him because I was determined to get the rest of his Trent, his anointing. I was like, just pour it on me because I'm going to carry the legacy, daddy. I got you. I remember at that moment, I realized I was like, God, I can't believe you're not healing my dad. And I heard the Lord say he's getting his ultimate healing right now. And I was like, why, 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 why do you take my ex? Somebody that don't want to be here. And I heard the Lord say, because your daddy's ready and they ain't. And it did something to me because I realized that when 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 we are in a season that we don't understand, sometimes we got to file it in this. I don't understand God, but I trust you mm -hmm. because Romans eight twenty eight said He's working all things together for our good. And so it's taking those moments that break your heart and allowing it to be turned into the healing of hearts mm -hmm. for other people, mm -hmm. and realize that you got a legacy. Yeah, stop looking at it like it's bad. Yeah, get up. Yeah. yeah. And I, that's so important to remember when we're going through it. And it's, you know, w no matter where we're at, we've either come through a storm, we're in a storm, or we're headed to a storm. <laughs> I mean, that's just the reality of, of living in the fallen world that we live in. And I think it's easy for me to say that right now. But I think when I've been going through it, it's not always easy to remember that. Remember that. Um, but yet, I think when we have walked with the Lord long enough, we can look back at these like stepping stones in our lives where we can see, oh, yeah, God did that. He wow. redeemed that part of my life and he can do it again. 
And then I think, you know, when we're talking about waiting, seasons of waiting, I think there's this whole other side. Like we've been talking about seasons of waiting that are painful or we're dealing with some brokenness. I think sometimes there are seasons of waiting where we are anticipating the next thing. It just hasn't happened yet. And I remember like that's happened for me a lot in the season I've been, you know, like I'm in the middle, um, I have, I'm in the middle of writing a book. Um, but I remember before I signed with that, this particular publisher, there was like a period of six or eight months where, you know, the, the book proposals were out, the publishers were interested. I just, nobody was like getting back with like concrete numbers or anything. And of course I'm like, I want to jump start with this message in my heart. I want to write it and figure out what's next. And that was a lonely season because even though I was excited about all the things the Lord was doing. Nobody else was in it with me. I would, and like you said, when he he put the call, it wasn't a conference call. And so I think sometimes we're in seasons of waiting because we are anticipating what's next. It just hasn't happened yet. And so I wondered if you had any advice for people that might be in that s- space. Like maybe they're waiting for that final job offer, that final call, or they're waiting for like my daughter, she's getting ready to graduate college in December, but it's like, okay, where am I going to work? Where am I going to live? What am I going to do? It's exciting season of waiting, but it's still waiting and it's still kind of lonely because we're kind of doing it in this unique kind of space. You know, for me, Rachel, I, I live like this. I'm 51 years old now and at 51 years old, it's working. I allow myself when I find myself, I've put all like all the book deal that, that, that's being researched by publishers. I've already put in my college you know, uh, I've finished my four years of college. This is next. When I have gotten to a place where I'm at the fork and I'm waiting on God to come through in that area, I always get busy doing something that I'm already doing. Mm. God, I'm trusting you, but I'm not going to brew on it. Like I'm going to trust you, but I'm not going to step in and try to help you. Mm. I've laid everything out. My part's ready. Now I'm going to do what I can do with what I've got in my hands right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to work it. I'm going to do my podcast. I'm going to do my uh, lives. I'm going to get on and pray. I'm going to use the season I'm in as ammunition to talk a lot on social media. Because if I'm going through it, somebody else is. So I'm not over here stressing and putting myself back in that place where I'm giving it to God, but taking it away. Mm-hmm. So when you're in a season of waiting, you have to remember that you're in a season of waiting, but not stopping. So you're waiting, but you still have a whole nother world over here. If you look, you do. Yeah. You are, you, you've got access to like lives on Facebook, Instagrams, TikToks. You can be talking about that waiting. I think that God uses the seasons we're in as messages in that season. Mm. If you're in a season of waiting, there's a group of people that God sent your way that's in the same space. Mm. And so while I'm waiting, I'm going to be preaching about waiting. Mm, I love that. I love so that. I'm not over here focused on, Oh my God, I wonder if today, I wonder if today, I'm not even thinking about it. That's in God's hands. He's given me the best book deal I can have. And he's waiting on the right ones to come. Right. Mm. Because he's going to bless what you do. Obedience. One ounce of obedience will do more for you than all the prayer in the world. Oh, so while that. you're waiting, stop worrying about it. You cannot have worry and faith. You cannot worry and worship. You cannot have faith and fear. You've got to give it to God and say, okay, now it's yours to work out the details, but I'm going to be over here helping people in the waiting. I love that. Well, speaking of helping people in the waiting, I wanted to share uh, a new resource that you have. It's this new book called Unstuck. Would you wow. just share with the listeners about what prompted this project for you and what a little bit about it? Yes. So I, y'all, I am the queen of, uh, I was waiting on God to do everything for me. And I realized he wasn't a Jenny in a bottle. He was, he needed class participation. And so in August, I released a book called You Gotta Get Up. And then I went, once this book came out, so many people, because I attract, man, 70% of my following don't know Jesus. They're just coming to know Jesus. And they were like, man, this book, because I got all these stories about God using people with the worst past to create the best futures and giving us hope in the storm. And Then I realized that after I wrote, you got to get up, that a lot of these people now need a daily uh, homework assignment Mm. and that's going to help them put into action. Because baby, when I've been in the mud, when I have been in the messy middle, it's hard for me to pray. uh, You know, when I was coming into this, coming into my own, I, I, I didn't have a whole lot of prayer because the enemy don't want you to pray. The enemy don't want you to read your Bible because those that's your GPS. 
And so this book, Unstuck, is 90 days. You read one page a day. I love that. And it's giving you your homework. You wake up first thing in the morning and read it. It's going to take you no time. And then I give you your little prayer and declaration to pray over yourself that day. And so it's 90 days because I believe in three months, everything can change. Mm -hmm. All your habits, all your stuckness, all all being caught up in yourself, at your pity parties, all that breaks away. So it's a 90 day devotional and it is out and I'm excited, unstuck. I love that. I love that. Well, Kim, I was wondering if you would pray. I always pray at the end of the show because um, I think our audience, when they come to listen to an episode, we're all in different places. But I think this is one topic where everybody agrees or if they are not in a season waiting right now, they've been there and they know what it's like. And so I was wondering if you could pray for the person that is in a season of waiting right now. And um, I know that for, for people that are in a season of waiting, sometimes it just feels like it can drag on forever. And I w- will even look back at seasons of waiting in my own life. And now I even forget how long it felt <laughs> when I was in that season. So maybe pray for the person that finds themselves just like weary from the waiting and just pray maybe for some renewed energy, some renewed stamina. And um, and I, again, we'll, after you pray, we'll share where people can get a copy because I know this will be a great resource for them. But maybe just pray for that person that is the one that needs to be reading this book. I would love to. Father, I just thank you that today was a divine appointment for that person that is watching, listening to this today, that was at the at the at the end of their rope saying, God, I feel like you're on vacation. I feel like you have forgotten about me. I feel like you're blessing people that, that they don't even love you like I do. That God today in this 30 minute episode that you have renewed their mind, that you have given them the hope to to keep moving, to go forward, to make a new life, to give you permission to use them, use their story, use their shame, use their lack, use every single thing that looked like a crisis. And now they're going to build palaces with those stones that were thrown at them. Lord, I thank you today that God in Amos 9, 13, my favorite scripture right out of that message version, it says God's decree that it won't be long, baby. God declares today that it won't be long. Blessings upon blessings are going to chase you down. Your head is going to spin. I thank you that throughout these airwaves that you are spinning some heads, that God is going to make sense while we had to go through what we walked through. And today, Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for life more abundantly. I prophesy over this call today, over that person watching today, that, Lord, you showed them the way out. That, Lord, you give them clarity in their decisions. That you give them wisdom and understanding. That, God, you let them know that that, that right now in this season, that you are making a plan to bless them and not harm them, harm them, give them a future and a hope in the name of Jesus. Today is a turnaround, a reset in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Where can people find you and where can they get a copy of Unstuck? Man, you can find me all over. You can go to my website, realtalkkim.com. And find out everything about me there. But you can also follow me on every social media platform there is as Real Talk Kim. Great. And we'll put the links to everything in the show notes today, too. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been such an honor and a privilege to have you on the show. I'm so proud of you, Rachel. Thank you for being a world changer. Thank Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. Amen. All right. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going. Keep going.